everybody just by chance here hope you're doing good today I want to bring you a little tutorial on how to set up a visual metronome on a MIDI controller to be used in any performance or worship or if you're a visual guy like I am it's it's nice to have something going where you can just take a look over and see where you're at see what's going on or if for nothing else just because it's a cool factor to throw on a controller so first thing you're going to need is obviously a MIDI controller of some sort and then Ableton Live. So we'll need to just jump in in Ableton Live and we'll see how we make this thing happen. So let's pull up our preferences menu. We'll go to our MIDI sync tab and under our MIDI ports all we need to do is make sure our track and remote are turned on for the both input and output of the MIDI Fighter 3D. Then we're going to jump over to a blank MIDI track. I've got one here along with some examples that we'll take a look at in a minute. And then we're just going to need to check our MIDI from and MIDI 2. And let's go ahead and drop in and we want to make sure MIDI from is the uh, MIDI Fighter 3D on channel 3. Because that's what the 3D transmits on is channel 3. And then we're going to want to send that MIDI out back to the MIDI Fighter 3D as well on channel 3. So we need to make sure our track is enabled, make sure our monitor is set to auto, and then let's we'll just drop in a MIDI clip and we'll change the length here to four bars. And you can either figure this out with a little trial and error or Google or however you want to do it, but if you know what notes are actually being fired by your controller, it's really easy. In this scenario, we're just going to start with C2, which is the top left. And I'm just going to track it from left to right and then work its way down the controller. So we will just keep dropping down as we go. Should have put this one down here. Go ahead and just eliminate this. And then we can just duplicate, drop it down duplicate again and we should be good to go let's go ahead and fire this off see what's happening and as you can see it's tracking down the controller and that's at 120 beats per minute there so just right out of the box it's good to go so that's pretty cool but if you want to make it in more interesting for yourself, if you want to change up the direction of the, the lights, you can do that as well. For this instance, we're going to start at the bottom and work our way up. I just preset up a few of these that you can take a look at. Or maybe we want to go vertically, and we can do that as well. And you've noticed that the color that's being triggered for each pad on my MIDI fighter is changing. And that's because you can take it a step further and we'll just do it on this new track that we created if you just want to drop in a velocity effect on that MIDI channel we just created set your lowest to 1 and your highest to 127 and you can change your output here and when doing so it's going to trigger 127 velocity which is the highest you can get and so it's not going to it's going to be a bright it's going to be a bright light and it won't be dim unless you turn down your range. But we'll fire this track back off. And we'll notice that as we start taking our out high up, it's going to start changing the color of what's being fired. And that's just for either a visual thing or if you're like me and you have a drum rack set up here and say you've got your samples dropped in, it's still playable over the top. So if you have another color that's triggering your MIDI fighter through its setup program, you can make sure that your colors don't you know, counteract each other and that way you don't lose where you're at. So that's pretty much it where it comes to that. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, if you got any questions, shoot me a, shoot me a comment or <clears throat> drop me a link on my website, whatever you wanna do. But I appreciate you watching, and I hope you guys have a good day.